Hello everyone, and welcome to World of Tanks Generals. That's right, game's currently in closed beta, but it's currently okay to post videos. And so, you may be asking, what what is World of Tanks Generals? You know, there's World of Tanks, there's World of Warplanes, and everybody and their mom probably knows about World of Warships right now. Now, World of Tanks Generals is an online collectible card game, just like all of uh, Wargaming's other stuff, it's free to play. It is World War II based, but this is where it's really different. Let's say you wanted to play World of Tanks Generals right now. This is exactly what you would do. You go to worldoftanksgenerals.com, make sure you're signed in. Obviously, it's closed beta, so you have to one be in it. But if you're not, there's like a sign up thing here. Just enter your email address. Next time they, they invite people, you'll probably get invited. I don't know, don't don't ask me for it, keys and stuff, I don't have that. But basically you just hit play, it loads up, there you go, you're in game, runs off the client. I'm using Google Chrome currently. Uh, settings for the game are very lackluster right now. You have your help, you have sound on and off, that is it, on or off, that's all you have. Now honestly, when I play, I mostly keep it off. Uh, I don't know, I'm, it really doesn't matter. The music, the music's good, I like the music, it doesn't bother me, it goes with the theme, I like the, the effect noises in the background. But since the latest patch, some of the in-game sounds are annoying. There's also full screen, which I'll hit it really quick. It's not going to look right on your screen because I have how I'm using XSplit right now. But there is a full screen option, just so you know. Uh, currently, whoops, I suddenly hit F1. Currently. I just like to do this, that way I can sit here and swap between tabs really quickly. Now, as you can see, just like World of Tanks, it still uses credits, it has free experience, and instead of gold, it uses tokens. So if you're coming from World of Tanks to World of Tanks Generals, what do you need to know what's different? Pretty much... Hmm, let me see it. So from World of... let me, let me word it this way instead. If you're coming from World of Tanks, but you have played other collectible card games, you're probably going to be well off. Now me, honestly, the last time I played a collectible card game was the Yu-Gi-Oh! arcade game on Xbox Live, which was fucking awesome by the way. Now, <clears throat> now if you're new to collectible card games, pretty much, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's, it's, it's a card game. They're collectible and you play it uh, so let's go ahead and I'll just show you some of them actually this is actually this is where world of tanks generals is a lot different from other online card games what you may actually be used to is card packs like if you played any of the Yu-Gi-Oh games on like the Game Boy Advance for example those had tons of different packs you would like go to a store spend your money on packs you can completely get random cards However, this, if you're coming from World of Tanks or just any of the other Wargaming games, you're going to be completely familiar with it. The way it works, and I've already researched all these, so I'm going to go to like another one. The way it works is when you battle, you earn experience, just like in World of Tanks. You earn experience, you also earn a little bit of free XP as well. Now with that experience, what you do is you unlock cards. Now, I'm currently saving up for the KV1, so I don't I don't want to unlock a card with that one. Let me see if I can find somebody else I'm willing to spend some uh, research points on. That way I can show you. Here we go. Uh, let's go ahead and I'll unlock the T28. So, you can see here my 21st Battalion Headquarters. That's what this is called. This is your Headquarters card. Uh, more on that shortly. Currently has 3,779 experience I can spend. The T28 costs 3400 experience. I actually really enjoy how they've done this. It's not random. I can go in, see what card I want to unlock, and work my way towards that card. If I wanted for if I really wanted this SU8, first I have to unlock, of course, the headquarters. Then I have to unlock the T28, and then I'll be able to unlock the SU8. So that's how that works. And just so you know, you can easily see what like what a card has just by right clicking on it. As you can see here, it's the T28, it's a USSR medium tank. In this game, it's tier 5. There's 
there will be more on that as well. Its firepower is 2 and its HP is 5. However, for USSR headquarters, its HP is actually upped by 3, so it would actually be 8. It would be 2 attack and 8 HP instead, and it also has 2 resource generation, which we'll get into that once I play a game. But right now, I just kind of want to show you this, because if you're coming from World of Tanks without like a collectible card game background, you need to know this, because uh, the tutorial can be lackluster in some sense, but since the latest update, it has been better. Uh, so let's go ahead. We're going to research that. I've researched it. I can't use it, though. I cannot use this T28 because I don't have any copies of it. As you can see right there, it's zero. I can go ahead and purchase for one copy. It's going to be 48,000 of my credits, of which I only have 71,000. So... To me, the game's incredibly grindy, and it's not research. Like with World of Tanks, the game is incredibly grindy, in my opinion, for research and much less for credits. In World of Tanks Generals, this game feels incredibly grindy for credits, but that is my personal opinion. Alright, so let's go ahead, I'll actually buy a card if I can find like a decent one I do want to buy. Uh, but again, I, I am trying to get specific cards right now, so I just don't want to spend uh, credits willy-nilly unless I actually want what I'm buying. Eh, well, you guys pretty much know how it works. Pretty much if I wanted to buy it, all I would do is just go to the card and then just click purchase and that's it. And then it would be in, in like, I'd own the card. Now, let's say I wanted to uh, put the card in my deck. It's quite simple. You just click edit. Loads up. Here is my collection of all my cards I currently have. You do start out with a, a good number of cards. And then here's what's currently in my deck right now. Now, while we're in here, let's I'll go ahead and I'll just talk about the deck editor. Actually, I'm going to take that back. I will talk about the deck editor in another video because that can actually get pretty heavy handed. Right now I just kind of want to tell you about the game. So let's just go ahead, I'm going to, you can select different battle modes. When you first start up you're automatically going to do the basic combat training. I actually did just do a video of basic combat training but I was, it was, it was boring. It was boring. I'm not very good at this uh, but I do want to try to at least give you guys some decent information. The tutorial since uh, the latest patch, it's a lot better than it was. But what I'm gonna do is just gonna go ahead and do a training battle against the bot. There it goes. I should steamroll this bot, by the way, because the bot uses the basic deck, I'm pretty sure. Uh, now, when you first start, this is the screen. My headquarters is in the bottom left, the enemy headquarters is in the bottom right. Now, if you guys want me to play through the tutorial, just let me know. However, I don't want to be completely redundant. Because one, you've either already played the game and you know how it works. Or two, you're planning on playing the game. And if you are, you probably know how like a card game works as well. So I don't want to just sit here and tell you stuff you already know. But if you do want me to go play through the tutorial, I will. If anything, I won't even talk over it. I'll just play the tutorial at a slower speed and you can just see exactly what's going on. And so let's get started. So pretty much when you first if you go first like right now I am going first I have six you get six cards in your hand You cannot hold more than six cards if I were to end my turn with seven cards in my hand it would automatically Randomly discard a card you do not get to pick which card you discard Which is extremely annoying in my opinion. Just give me one second. I get a drink. All right, so you do not get to choose which card you discard. It does not tell you that anywhere in the tutorial. So that's what I'm gonna try to do with this battle right now. I'm gonna play through it. I'm gonna try to explain things to you that the tutorial will not already explain to you. In fact, I believe, uh, you know what? I will just play through the tutorial. I'll probably just put music over it or something. I'll just let people follow along with the video. All right, so here's the thing, Russia, is they're good in my opinion they're like a jack of all trades uh 
I can either go really offensive or I can play semi-defensive. Germany, however, they have to be offensive. Their training HQ starts with two firepower. That's the most out of all the training HQs. The other ones only have one. Its HP is tied with the American HP for 16, so it's actually pretty low. Uh, but its resource growth is four, which is trash. Our resource growth is five, which is a lot better. It allows me to play like medium tanks right away. So really quick, this is in the tutorial, but just so you know what's going on. Cards do have a resource cost. Uh, my HQ makes five. I'm gonna go ahead and play the MS1. It's gonna cost me two. Light tanks can move right after you place them. I have three resource left. I'm gonna place the T1 light tank as well. I'll actually move it over here. And now, I actually, if you see it, it went up to plus seven. The reason for that is my headquarters makes five, the T1 light makes one, the MS1 makes one. You can see that right here in the top right corner. So next turn, if everything I have stays on the field, I will have seven resources to play with. Now, headquarters can attack other headquarters just like that it goes over that in the tutorial which uh, I will I'll put like right up over here or something I'll, I'll like link to it or something I'll, or maybe I'll decide to play in the background I don't know we'll, we'll figure something out with that so then I am my turn the opponent's gonna make his turn see he's going pretty offensive he's just going right for my headquarters here's what I'm gonna do though I'm gonna play I oh. Yeah, I'll play a defensive squad. That way, it starts absorbing the hits. Uh, that specific card had an ability called Reinforcements. If you hover over it, it tells you right there. When you deploy this card, draw another card. Now, what we're going to do is we're just going to majorly go on the offensive here. I have my MS1 take hit. The reason for that is tank destroyers attack first. And... If a tank destroyer has an equal to or greater than amount of firepower, which is right here, <clears throat> then a unit it's attacking, it instantly destroys the unit, and the unit will not be able to do counter attack damage. So that's why I had my MS1 attack first, because it had 4 HP, it could withstand the hit, and a unit can only attack one time per turn. So now my T1 light could freely go ahead and just hit that panzer and then I'll just move it up the reason I moved it up is I'm now blocking one of my opponents three spawn areas for their tanks which is called the bridgehead so they can spawn a unit here or here until they destroy this unit go ahead and we'll attack the heroes again and our turn Alright, so as you saw there, my defensive squad absorbed the hit, it lost some HP, that's fine, that's what it's there for. Uh, he spawned a unit and kind of just suicided it into my T1 light, which is really bad play. But here we are, we're right next to his training headquarters, we'll go ahead and do some damage there. And we have seven resources to play around with, so what we'll do is we'll play another defensive squad. And we will spawn a T26. Move it up. Keep on attacking. There you go. See exactly the same with tank destroyers. My uh, T1 light did not counterattack because it died pretty much. It, it died too quickly. Uh, it could not counterattack. Alright, so let's see here. Uh, we have some resources to play around with. So, first let's just worry about this T-18. We can't quite get the kill, which is annoying. <clears throat> we'll play another defensive squad, because I have openings for it. Really quick. Uh, there's five areas for squads, which is where these cards go, and there's different types. This one's a recon squad, it goes in the recon spot. This one is a comm squad, it goes in the comm squad, comms spot. Uh, this symbol right here is for artillery. 
This symbol right here is a medical squad. And then this one, I guess repair. I don't know it off the top of my head to be honest. So, pretty much, at one time you could have all your squads filled up. And they'll be like buffing your HQ, maybe have some other stuff. Like this one, for example, has like an extra little thing here. Uh, when HQ does damage, it deals extra damage to enemy squads, but he doesn't have any up right now. Let's go ahead and move through that, end our turn. You may be wondering why I'm attacking the T18 instead of just going for his HQ. Uh, against... Against the... Uh, German headquarters if I have a bunch of defense stacked up like I do right now I like to just worry about uh, keeping board advantage board control and so best way to do that is to uh, just keep destroying enemy units obviously now if you notice there my medium tank moved diagonally uh, that is like a specialty of the medium tank light tanks can as well a light tank can either move two spaces vertically or horizontally or one space diagonally a medium tank can move one space in any direction a heavy tank can only move one space vertically or horizontally and a tank destroyer it's the same and an SPG it's the same so we have eight resources to play with hold on a second my stepdad is yelling in the background alrighty so for you, that was probably just like a quick cut, but now I'm back. I don't remember where I left off yet. Oh yeah, I was explaining movement, but I already went over all the units. Uh, so we have an open artillery spot here, so I'm going to go ahead and play my artillery man. Gives, me, gives my HQ two extra damage. I actually should have played that first before I attacked with my headquarters, but oh well. And then we'll go ahead and just end our turn. Yeah, like I said, I'm going to steamroll the AI just because... Uh, I'll show you at the end, but it's using the basic deck. Which, by the way, the tutorial does not cover. So I will go ahead and show you that as well. Now let's go ahead and we'll, we'll play our T21. And headquarters can just kill that unit, so let's get that off the board. Alright. So far, so good. If you guys have questions on the game, please let me know. I am going to be making other videos specialized about topics, but I just figured we, I'd just jump right into it and show you what the game currently is. I don't know why that lady keeps appearing there. Uh, she's incredibly annoying. I nicknamed her Bertha. Let's go ahead and play an artillery unit. Really quick, the way artillery works. Uh, it can attack any spotted unit. To spot a unit, you just have to have a unit adjacent to it somehow. Anywhere around it, any of the eight squares around it. Uh, if a unit is next to your headquarters, it will be spotted as well. So then basically my artillery can attack the T6, which I will. And then I'll just have the MS1 finish it off. That way I can put most of my firepower right onto the enemy headquarters. So he only has one HP left. It's pretty much game here next turn. Oh, they're trying. But they just can't break through all my defenses. And we'll just finish them off with the MS1. Won't even bother. I could have played that logistics card and just had a full squad going on right now. But that's that. Victory is ours. Now, as I was saying before, uh, the, the uh, AI just uses like the basic deck of that tier, pretty much. Uh, so you can see right here, deck power, mine was four times better than theirs. Uh, 40, and mine was 164. You will never, ever, ever fight somebody with a 40 power deck against a 164 power deck, but I will talk about that more in my deck edit editor video. Uh, you can see the other stuff here, your statistics and stuff. When you're against another player, there's two tabs. The first tab shows you how much experience and everything you've earned, and then the second tab will actually be the one you're looking at now. And victory music is really loud. Alright, so then, that's pretty much the game right there. That is it. That That's what happens in in a game. Uh, again, that was against the, the AI. And when you first start, you're uh, obviously going to go through the tutorial. Like I said, I'm not going to 
try and sit here and be redundant. Uh, but after the tutorial's done, uh, you do get these three different ones. Each one plays its own way. I'll go ahead and do a video on each of those as well. Uh, let's go ahead and actually go ahead and I really like 4th Division. Let's play a training battle with my 4th Division deck. Again, I'll probably just steamroll the bot, but this way you can see what you have to look forward to. Because pretty much, when you first start out, you're only going to have these three decks. So, let's say you really wanted 4th Division, like you, you saw me play and you're like, yeah, that's awesome. What you would have to do is you'd have to unlock Last Stand, you'd have to unlock Chattering, and then you could unlock 4th Division. Each of these has research costs. I don't think I'm able to look at it because I've already have them researched. Yeah, I'm not able to. So pretty much, uh, you like I already went over this, you research them. But then this is like right here, it says right here, it's a training HQ tier one. This is a tier four headquarters. From the tier four headquarters, you can unlock up to a tier eight headquarters, which is uh, the top one in the game right now. As you can see, disregarding all the other cards before it, just the headquarters is going to cost me 39,000 research. So yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take a little while. Another thing the tutorial does not go over is that every single one of your decks gets a times two or times three or whatever it happens to be, it gets that every day. So it's not, it's not nations just like in World of Tanks, each of your tanks gets a times two. In this, each of your deck headquarters gets a times two. Not each deck you make with the headquarters, just the headquarters itself. Uh, there's also missions, which you can find out by clicking this tab up here. Uh, current missions going on right now are five battles with each nation, pretty much. Uh, you complete it, you get 70 tokens. Uh, there's destroy 50 enemy units, deal 500 damage. So if I sat here and I, I did all of these, I could get 263 tokens, which let's say I did, I, let's say you just played and you did everything and you got your 263 tokens. What could you spend them on? You could, uh, well, let me go back really quick. You can click right here where it says premium cards. You won't have enough to afford the premium headquarters, but with 260, you actually can afford one premium card just one though uh so you can get like you can get the locust for 240 for example you can get a pz38h for 200 now i actually already have some i got the t15 and the m4a2 e4 i actually have three copies of each so i actually saved up my tokens bought three copies so let's say i wanted three copies of the pz38h uh, you, you know, just buy it as you get the tokens, or you just save up 600 because that's how much it's going to cost, and then just buy out all three. Because you have three copies of a card in your deck. Now, like I said, let's just go ahead and play like a higher match. Now, the AI does play, it, it's always the same. Like for, for the training HQs, it always plays. Uh, the rush or not sorry not Russian the German headquarters for tier 4 headquarters it always plays second armored which is the American one the training HQs they don't get anything special they all have like their own quirks and stuff like how you should play them but once you get to tier 4 the HQs are different they each they uh, they get special things like the one I'm playing right now it gains eight resources a turn it has one firepower 23 hit points but it has a special ability. I could spend seven resources to draw a card. Now, the AI also has a similar stats. Two firepower, 22 HP, it gains seven resources a turn. However, whenever a unit is destroyed, regardless if it's mine or theirs, it restores one HP to its own headquarters. So then, let's, uh, let's get started. So what I'm gonna start with is I'm gonna spawn a T26. The reason for this, it gives me plus two resource growth, so that's really good right off the bat. That's gonna bring up my resource production to 10. Now again, light tanks can move right after battle, so I'm gonna move it up to the corner, put it outside of his reach, that way I can hopefully keep it on board so I can use those extra resources next turn. I also have five resources I can currently use, and with, I can either, and with that, I'm actually gonna go ahead and 
spawn another T26. That'll bring up my resource production to 12. And then with my last two, I'll spawn my AT1. Used up all my resources that turn. AT1's a good card in my opinion. It gets plus one resource growth. It's a tank destroyer, so again, it always fires first. And it actually has a special ability, camouflage. This unit cannot be attacked by headquarters or SPGs. So pretty much anything ranged, it can't hit it. So it's actually a pretty annoying card to deal with. Now, one thing that I always ended up forgetting when I first started playing was that you could attack the enemy headquarters with your headquarters. So do try to keep that in mind when you're playing. Uh, if you miss a turn to do that, that actually really hurts. Looks like we got a similar setup going on right now. The card they just played, that was an order. You can think of it as like a one-use card that costs resources pretty much. Uh, or like a power-up or something. So look at that, we have uh, 13, 13 resources to use. Now, I have a plan in mind. I'm going to play my SU-5. The reason for that, you might be wondering, oh, one attack seems kind of shitty. Eh, but for Russian HQs, it does an extra two damage to SBGs and tank destroyers. So, I can do three damage to that T-18, just like that. And then, I still have eight resources. We'll go ahead and play Artillery Man. And then we'll just go ahead and attack the T-18 with our Artillery. That way our AT-1 doesn't take any damage. And I'm gonna start advancing on him. I'm gonna try to put the pressure up. You see, my AT1 did attack first. Heavy tanks, once they attack, they can't counter attack, uh, but they have a lot of HP. Alright, so we're gonna just advance on up. We shall attack the SU18 with the T26. Artillery cannot counter attack against anything. And if the artillery were to attack me, I would not be able to counterattack it. Uh, reason for that, artillery always attacks from range, so to speak. So even if like my artillery attacked and didn't kill it, uh, it would. You can currently. I don't know if they'll ever implement it, but you currently cannot uh, counter battery, even if like I was spotted, for example. So then, let's see here. What do I want to do? Maybe three damage. 14 resources to spend. Mm -hmm. Let's move the SU-5 here. Play that. I'm actually going to use my ability. Alright, well, we drew another card. Ooh, duh, duh, duh. Take one. I'm trying to, like, play this as effectively as possible. move that up. His only choice is either destroy one of these units, which his headquarters can attack my AT-1, or he can spawn a unit right here right now, and that's it. So currently what I'm trying to do is just block him from being able to spawn units. Which is not going to be entirely possible, because he can sit here and, again, attack my, my light tanks. But, if you notice, I have so many more units than him on the field right now. Not to mention I have a really good squad that I'm using, so... Hopefully I can take him out before he kills my headquarters. Alright, cool. So then I have a bunch of resources to use. So this is uh, where it's going to start going down. Now the game does uh, lag behind a little bit. It doesn't help that I'm recording this either in like 1080p at 60 frames either. Uh, but So if you do a whole bunch, it, it will lag a bit. So let's just do this. Just kill that with my artillery. And we are going to start putting the hurt on him. Now I'm pretty much just flooding the board with units, rushing him constantly. I'm giving them as little maneuver 
time space, so to speak. It's possible. Uh, so pretty much his only hope right now is to destroy my headquarters. And so the AI is currently bombarding my headquarters like there is no tomorrow. Let's go ahead and use this. But to combat that, hopefully I can draw myself a decent card, which it doesn't look like I am right now. Okay, three. Uh, let's go ahead. I'm going to attack with these back units. The reason for that is that I can move my heavy tank up here to block this spot and attack his headquarters. Whereas my medium tanks are outside the range of doing that, so I attack with them uh, because I won't be able to use them to attack the headquarters next turn. We'll go ahead. And I'm actually going to use my ability again. I don't need to spawn another unit right now. I actually want to try and get a defensive squad if possible just so I can have a bit of insurance. Though I'm pretty sure we have this game in the bag right now. Oh, oh, oh. Alright, so they brought me down to 3 HP. It was extremely close, but that's pretty much going to be game right there. So you can actually see how close games can get. Even though I had the board flooded, he just kept attacking my headquarters, which is a way to win. So that's pretty much what you have to, to look forward to. Uh, that's only one type of deck. That was only this HQ out of all of these. And, uh, you know, I think I'll do videos on each one, how I think they should be played, how I play them personally. But if you guys have anything specific, you know, please just put it in the comments below. I do hope this video helped you out. Uh, again, I understand I'm not 100% awesome at this, but, you know, I'm, I'm, I am doing my best. So with that, I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys next time.